Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 24th lecture of the course on Sociological Perspectives on Modernity. We are in the 6th module of this course and in the 6th module we are discussing deconstruction of modernity through the lens of, through the lenses of three important perspectives namely feminism, cultural studies and postmodernism. Okay? And we have already discussed feminist challenge to discussed the feminist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology. What are those central pillars of modernity that we have already discussed? Holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality, and social movements. We have already discussed the feminist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology. And now we are trying to we are we are, we are discussing deconstruction of modernity through the lens of cultural studies. In cultural studies, within cultural studies, we are discussing, we have, in fact, we have already discussed the socialist, humanist perspective on cultural studies response to critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the works of E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams. And the other strand, the other theoretical strand, the, 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 the other philosophical standpoint, okay, that radical post-structuralism okay, that we are in this lecture we are going to cover this portion that 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 radical post-structuralism through the works of Michel Foucault. Okay. If you look at E. P. Thompson and, and Raymond Williams reflections, you will find that their starting point to bring about a critique to modernity was Marxism. In the case of Foucault, or in the case of Foucault's reflections, it developed from the structuralist tradition, contrary to uh, E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams' starting point of as Marxism. But, but again, Foucault is pretty unusual among post-structuralists in retention of analysis of power, institutions, and so on. Okay, as against purely literary or philosophical approach. For for Foucault. I mean the way Foucault tried to operate, okay. I mean multiplicity of theories rather than single coherent theory. Both J and Habermas treat dialogue between Foucault and critical modernism as a central one. Foucault shares with E. P. Thompson as well as Raymond Williams so far as the dissolution of isolation of separate levels of society is concerned. Okay. For, for Foucault, these separate levels of levels of society okay, can be analyzed through the analysis of power. Okay. For uh, I mean, what are the models of power? What is power? Okay. The traditional models of power, I mean, which includes liberal theories as well as Marxist theories. But for Foucault, power is possessed by someone. Power is derived from a central source. And power is primarily repressive in nature. Okay, I mean, how power is repressive? Power is derived from a central source. Power is possessed by someone. Okay, there are many many things reflected on. Okay, I mean, he took the example of suppose prison, jail, school. That that house in in prison or or school or mental hospital. How power is exercised? Power is exercised to, to further the ideology of the state, okay? in the furtherance of state's ideology. Okay? Power is found everywhere. If you look at the, at the works of, I mean, uh, of Foucault, why I said uh, 
it developed from the structuralist tradition in contradistinction with E.P. Thompson and Raymond Williams uh, starting points as Marxism. Foucault in fact, his first work discipline and punish, this is a structuralist move within social and political theory. But later on, he, but later on he moved away from these, this structuralist uh, standpoint when he reflected on in fact, uh, the order of things, okay. the history of sexuality. Okay. The order of things in fact is, is one of the most important contributions of the 20th century. Okay. Not simply by Foucault, but, but, but I mean if, if you look at social and political theory as such, the order of things okay, is very important. How, how, how a particular concept is not static, it, they vary according to uh, the changes in modes of production, changes in our intellectual and political consciousness and so on. I was suppose for example, in the order of things, Foucault tries to dwell upon a particular concept, suppose madness. If you, if you look at, in fact madness and civilization is a structuralist, more structuralist move. Okay. But, but if you look at uh, the order of things where, where he tries to look at uh, madness, okay. suppose how was madness considered during the renaissance, during the reformation and during the enlightenment. Madness was considered a divine creation during the phase of renaissance. Madness was considered a criminal threat during the period of reformation. And during the enlightenment phase, madness was considered a medical condition. That is why where, whatever which wherever you find mental hospitals in the world, their uh, mental hospitals were created in the post enlightenment phase. Because earlier mentally uh, challenged people, I mean they, they were not considered, uh, it was not considered a medical condition, rather it was considered a divine creation uh, in, the, in, the, in the phase of renaissance and, and a criminal threat during the reformation. Okay. I mean that is how power is exercised. Okay. I mean how, how power is exercised, we will see how power is primarily repressive for Foucault. For Foucault, power is exercised as what? Now, power is exercised for Foucault because it is a relation. Because somebody exercises her or his power over me because there is a relation. That relation is not simply a relation of domination and subordination or subjugation, but the relation of exploitation. Okay. This is derived from structuralist relationalism and uh, 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 versus subject orientation of, uh, of Western Marxism. Secondly, for, for Foucault, power is analyzed as coming from the bottom up. Okay. I mean, post-structuralist refusal of single unified totality, namely state, ideology, economy and so on. I mean, instead, multiplicity of power relations and no distinction between levels. Okay. He also emphasized, I mean, he also was one with E. P. Thompson as well as Raymond Williams on this, that that uh, that that single unified totality. There is nothing called single unified totality or holism. Maybe the state, ideology, economy, and so on. Okay, they must be examined in terms of their intersectionality. Okay, that's why such intersectionality leads Foucault to to examine multiplicity of power relations and it also enables Foucault to suggest that, that, that there is no distinction between the levels in the society, there are separated levels in the society. Okay? You just cannot say that no, this is economy, this is social, this is political, this is cultural, no. One must examine the whole array of economy, so social, political, cultural, institutional, ideological, legal, ethical and so on in their totality. Okay? I mean one must examine these categories together, not in an isolated manner. Okay? Please note here 
that 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 uh, for for uh, Foucault, there is no escape from power relations because whatever institutions that we have created, these institutions are mostly created by the state, or private property, family. Okay, these institutions they also they try to create hierarchy, they try to create power, and they try to exercise unfettered power over others over the marginalized sections of the society over uh, even in family you will find there is power relation in private property that is there is power relation in state uh, in the state also there is power relation okay when he did that i mean that this is this was a challenge to habermas's ideal speech situation okay that that when he said there is no escape from power relations i mean human relations are always involved with coercive power okay when power is related to certain coercive measures, coercion, okay. this is not a legal, uh, uh, this is not a liberal pluralist perspective, I mean, but, but an all encompassing, encompassing multiplicity. Okay. When power is exercised everywhere, where, where, when power is held by, by only one person, or when power is possessed by someone or some institution, okay? when power is derived from a central source, when power is primarily uh, repressive in nature, okay? it becomes coercive power. That is why human relations are always involved with coercive power. Hence, this is not a liberal pluralism with private retreats, but an all encompassing multiplicity. This, this is a part of holism or totality. Okay. When he comes to social movements, okay, Foucault mentions that power includes the possibility of resistance and struggle against such power relations, but it is never uh, totally one dimensional. Okay. I mean, if there is repression, if there is exploitation, there must be resistance and struggle against the powers that be, but it is never totally one dimensional. You may find uh, power is exercised somewhere. I may exercise power. Uh, I may. I mean, pow power may be exercised on me by somebody, and I may not be able to exercise my power o over that person. But I can exercise. I'm and I'm trying to exercise my power over another person. That's why power is uh, exercised everywhere because it is a relation. Okay. Then. When, when uh, Foucault said that power is uh, as constitutive of subjectivity, because it is not absolutely objectively ordained, but subjectively uh, coordinated okay? through power knowledge distinction. Knowledge is power. I mean, uh, we generally do not tend to look at uh, knowledge for the sake of knowledge, for its own sake. But knowledge, the way it, it, it has, it creates power structures. Okay. Please note that, that contrast to um, Raymond Williams' use of Frankfurt School model of dominative or exploitative approach. Okay. I mean that instrumental rationality, I mean goal oriented social action, I mean uh, Weberian uh, version, which assumes original human nature uh, in terms of Marx's philosophical anthropology. Okay. There, are, there are shifting types of power for Foucault. If you look at his work on uh, I mean, work, discipline and punish, uh, I mean, uh, from dramatic spectacle, I mean, uh, public mutilation or execution to micro level but all present intervention, I mean, prison. I mean, uh, when I say prison, I mean surveillance interventions to reform prisoners. These, these shifting types of power, then there must be a link between knowledge and power. Power in prison system relates to ability to uh, view or hear prisoners and to know them as individuals constituted, for example, via a psychological history, I mean case set held by a psychologist who makes recommendations as to treatment, I mean, in the field of psychology, criminology and so on. 
then there is a spread towards uh, spread outwards via uh, such as examination of pedagogical knowledge i mean surveys in social sciences hence human sciences uh, are bound up with uh, the spread of surveillance as discipline or disciplines this suggests a characterization of modernity as disciplinary society but foucault refuses this kind of total analysis the reasons for its spread are seen as contingent okay this, this is very important if you if you look at such such analysis okay you if if you start with madness and civilization which is a structuralist move within social social and political theory of foucault and then you get into the order of things discipline and punishment uh, the history of sexuality and so on okay you will you will find that that foucault refutes some kind of kind of a total analysis i mean the 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 characterization of modernity uh, as disciplinary society refutes okay i mean that that ditto sexuality i mean victorian era such as not one of repression of sexuality so much uh, as of its creation via spread of uh, knowledge about sex when i say spread of knowledge about sex i mean foucault referred to psychological social scientific pedagogical criminological and so on okay foucault as an activist he tried to dwell upon the issue of homosexuality i mean people's people's self identification with their sexuality as as a as a central element of personality that relates to this form of knowledge this is very important and 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 perhaps for this reason and foucault also has to be examined not simply as an as, as a uh, as a theorist but also as as an activist the way he tried to hold aloft the banner of dissenting voices across uh, borders and so on uh, and foucault's deep analysis of 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 these elements makes him not simply a theorist but but also great champion of for of of uh, for for social and political causes okay hence hence foucault offers radical critique of rationality as as mode of domination he offers not so much as an alternative as a, as a greater awareness of the ambiguous nature of rationality it is not really possible to stand outside it for for foucault reflexivity consists in distancing ourselves from it and criticizing it being aware of its dangers as against the model of global intellectuality for example uh, some meta theory that that uh, foucault offers situated uh, i mean um, specific intellectual and political interventions okay now we have we have come to a point where we can we can see that radical post structuralist stand point that that foucault represents okay that that radical post structuralism as well as socialist humanism they constitute or they are constitutive of of the 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 intellectual trajectory of cultural studies okay okay now how we are going to now wrap it up okay we 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 started this this module i mean that that, that module on on deconstructing modernity okay we have already discussed the feminist challenge to a critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay now we are discussing cultural studies response to critical modernity okay we started with with very brief background to cultural studies how cultural studies joins feminism in the attempt to broaden the categories used cultural studies also joins feminism in the attempt to include culture without reductionism and thus cultural studies attempts to uh, generate a more adequate holism 
along with permutation. Okay, we 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 also I mean we 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 discussed there are two influential sources for cultural studies. One socialist humanism, the other radical post-structuralism. They are very different accounts, but surprising similarities may be found because a marginal status has been accorded to both socialist humanism as well as post radical post-structuralism within the ambit of social and political theory, precisely because both socialist humanism as well as radical post-structuralism emphasize more on perspectives than theories. Uh, they have not yet uh, founded coherent schools, but, but both socialist humanism as well as radical post-structuralism post-structuralism have taught people to think and work in new ways. Okay. Within socialist humanism, we have included the works of E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams and within radical post-structuralism, we have included the works of Michel Foucault and, and we have discussed how Thompson and Williams, okay, they, they in their attempt to, to, to refute the best superstructure model, okay. how E. P. Thompson has suggested that no politics and economics are also cultural, whereas Raymond Williams suggested that no culture is material. Okay. I mean um, that mode of production, uh, mode of domination okay, has been replaced by whole way of life and whole way of struggle for Raymond Williams. Okay. We have discussed uh, uh, E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams reflections on culture. Uh, I mean, as a part of social movements, holism or totality, reflexivity and rationality. I mean, the way E. P. Thompson uh, dwelt upon dialectic rationality, and Raymond Williams dwelt upon synthetic rationality, and and then we have also seen how Michel Foucault offers a radical critique of rationality as mode of domination. We must have, we must create different forms of rationality, different types of rationality. Okay. We cannot have only one way to look at rationality. Okay. Okay. And then, then we have discussed uh, Michel Foucault's uh, reflections on power relations. I mean, how power is possessed by someone, power is derived from a central source, okay. how power is primarily repressive. Okay. And then, we have discussed how Foucault suggested that you no know, power is exercised, it is a relation, this is derived from structuralist relationalism versus subject orientation of western Marxism and how power is analyzed as coming from bottom up, how uh, I mean there is no escape from power relations for Foucault uh, and power also includes the possibility of resistance and struggle, but it is never uh, totally one dimensional power as constitutive of subjectivity and so on. Then we have also discussed Foucault's refusal of, of a kind of total analysis, I mean the characterization of modernity as disciplinary society and so on okay. and how Foucault offers a critique or radical critique of rationality as mode of domination. He offers not so much as an alternative as a, as a greater awareness of the ambiguous nature of rationality. It is not possible to stand outside it for Foucault. Reflexivity for Foucault uh, is very important that consists in, in distancing ourselves from it and criticizing it, uh, being aware of its dangers. As against the model of global intellectuality, for example, some meta theory Foucault offers situated or specific intellectual and political interventions. There are certain common points, commonalities that we, that we tend to fine so far as E. P. Thompson, Raymond Williams and Michel Foucault are concerned okay. in, the, in, the, uh, in the section on cultural studies response to critical modernist paradigm in sociology. What are those common points? They are all, all these three, I mean all the three whether E. P. Thompson or Raymond Williams or Michel Foucault, all three they refute they made a they made a refusal of separate levels in the society okay maybe political economic cultural i mean uh, separate levels of analysis culture is not residual or reduced to economics or political ideology but key and omnipresent mediating term that they all three of them they 
made a refugial of of base superstructure model they made a refugial of separate levels of analysis okay uh, that economy polity culture language religion region ideology cannot be examined in isolation okay culture the way i tend to examine culture cannot be reduced to only political ideology cannot be only reduced to economics but culture is a key and omnipresent mediating term culture always attempts to mediate between economy cult um, polity ideology religion region and so on okay please note that there is a need to distinguish the analysis of political economic uh, cultural institutions from political economic cultural relations most social relations and institutions involve a mix of power value and meaning be it polity be it economy or or culture okay all three they made a rejection of inductive concepts uh, like uh, for example like structuralist type theory for ground up thinking loser categories and so on okay and and their refusal of only one type of rationality as mode of domination but but for them there is no alternative okay and and when when they say that uh, they are skeptic about rationality as as mode of domination or mode of subordination mode of subjugation mode of exploitation through power relations okay there there is no alternative to this i mean there is no way out okay and the radicalization of this position leads to the postmodernist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology and what we'll do in the next lecture that we are going to make a case in point that feminism cultural studies and postmodernism okay they make an attempt to to respond to or they try to make an attempt to bring about a critique to the central pillars of critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay and in in in, in such radicalization of this position which leads to the postmodernist challenge to the critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay there we are going to discuss in fact michel foucault more than we have discussed till now and with the postmodernist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology will will end this module on deconstruction of modernity okay and then we'll we'll move on to our last module Uh, of this course that is a new totality okay thank you